Welcome everyone to another Observability Clinic, a practitioner's guide to Dynatrace app engine. You can build an app for everything. Everything thinkable is now possible by building your own Dynatrace apps. I am not an app builder, even though I have already built an app, but the real ma uh, magicians behind the scenes that made all this possible, I have two of them with us, Dirk and Stefan. Thank you so much for being here. Dirk, maybe a quick round of introduction, who you are and what you do with Dynatrace. Sure. So hi also from my side. Thanks for having us, Andy. Um, I'm a product manager for App Engine and have been uh, uh, with Dynatrace uh, more than seven years now and have been working on App Engine since the project started. So really, really glad to see it going live now. And yeah. Yeah, it's really, really, really amazing. Seven years, uh, we used to work together at Dynatrace for a while as well. Now you moved over to the product side. Great. Uh, Stefan, how about you? Yeah, hello, I'm Stefan Wasserbauer. So product management, uh, everything on improving developers' lives, so to say. So lots of the tooling, SDK, and so forth. And I'm happy to show you today what we achieved with that. Perfect. Uh, folks, if you are live, please use the Q&A feature in GoToWebinar. And I'm stressing that Q&A is easier for me because I can see which questions we have already answered or not. It's easier for me to track. So please use the Q&A window in the Zoom webinar. If you're watching this on YouTube or on Dynatrace University, you can either leave a comment on the video or just reach out to us. But now I want to actually hand it over to the two of you. What have you guys prepared for us as it comes to uh, Dynatrace App Engine? All right, then we start maybe with the next slide, where is a short overview of what we will show you today. At first, we will tell you a little bit about what App Engine actually is and what functionality it brings actually to the Dynatrace platform. Then we will move uh, over to a live demo. So since this is a practitioner's guide, we will do some hands-on coding and Stefan will walk us through building an app from scratch, which is great. Um, and towards the end, we will uh, give you some tips and tricks and some pointers where you can start your uh, journey if you actually want to, to go down that path of developing an app or just uh, playing around with the features that the Dynatrace platform now offers. And Stefan, I think the challenge that you have right now, I'll give you some direct feedback. This is closed loop remediation. I think you're on the last slide of the PowerPoint, not on the first. So if you open up uh, PowerPoint again, go to the first slide because I saw you are, when you were clicking, you were, uh... just let me know. That's yeah. all good. Sorry, second here. I, I will start either way. Yeah. There we go. That, 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 that's what I just told. Perfect. Yeah. That's what you will learn today. <laughs> then we actually can 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 jump right into what, what actually App Engine is and what we did with that. So uh, I assume some of you or most of you, we can go to the next slide, please. Um, no Dynatrace, of course. And the, the good and very important message up front is that all of the functionalities and the feature that Dynatrace has is, is still there. So all of the functionality is there. That is a good message. Um, if, we, if we click, please. What we have done with App Engine on the one hand is we, we reorganized, please click the UI and made it easier to digest. So if you see the, the menu on the left, we just, uh, uh, added uh, much more room so you can actually find easier what you are looking for. It is a complete visual overhaul of the entire UI that is also very easy on the eyes if you ask me. Um, and the icons you see on the left here is uh, what, what we refer to now as apps. So similar to what you are used from your smartphone, um, Dynatrace runs apps now and App Engine is the engine that, that actually runs these apps in the Dynatrace platform. Um, click, please. What you also can do is, of course, you can have your favorites on, the, on, your, on your left side and pin what you need most on the dock. You can also change between light mode and dark mode. I hear this is a very often requested feature. And th 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 there you go. And uh, we also made, click, please, the search uh, uh, improved on the search, so you can look for all kinds of information that is either stored in the data or in 
notebook apps, for example, or in your workflows app, or you can actually also search for app and have one central point to actually look for information that you're looking for right now and find uh, all that is there. So this uh, is on the first look what what changed with app engine if, if you actually are already enabled uh, with the new features in your tenant but there is so much more than meets the eye on first glance because if we look closer there is so much more to explore what app engine actually brings to the table next slide please because what we actually want is to or, or enable you now to do is go on a journey on your own pace so as said before, all of the functionality and the features that Dynatrace had are still there, yet the, the visual representation of those is, has slightly changed, but all of the functionality is still there. So you can work with uh, and, and solve the, the problems and the use cases you have today. And in addition, you can um, adjust uh, uh, things like uh, dashboards and, and customize them. So there is a new version of dashboards also there with much more functionality than, than the previous version. And then we actually come into the more interesting parts of your journey that could potentially be yours as well if you're actually willing to go down that path. So I, I know, Andy, that you already had sessions on DQL, on notebooks and on workflows. So that is pretty good because if we come to the third uh, uh, image on the on the bottom now, it's about custom queries. So now with DQL, you have one um, query language to access all of the observability data that the Dynatrace, Dynatrace platform holds. And notebooks is a pretty good place to start with your explorative analytics, to be honest. So you can play around with, with queries, get used to the data that is now in the platform. And even more so, you can even write a couple of lines of code in these notebooks. I, I guess you have seen it in the notebook session. If not, I, I urge you to, to, to watch it, to watch it. It's definitely mm -hmm. worth it. Um, and no notebooks with the code section, and this code actually also is executed on App Engine, allows you to, um, for example, fetch data from external systems that was not possible up until now. And Ideally, you can play around with external APIs, see what authentication is necessary, what is the response that I actually get back, is the data that I actually need in the response, or do I need to call a different endpoint? And so your explorative journey continues. Once you've found what you actually want to do, you can go the next step and automate it. Mm -hmm. So with the Workflows app, you can just copy over the couple of lines of code you just written in your notebook section over to a JavaScript task in your workflows app. There is also a dedicated uh, practitioner's clinic on that. And have that uh, either executed based on a time schedule or when, uh, for example, a problem occurs in your environment. So that is great. That is also an additional um, um, capability that the platform upgrade, upgrade brought us. It's automation engine in combination with app engine, so to say. Mm -hmm. um, and as soon as you actually go go deeper into this um, um, explorative analytics and working with external data and just implementing the specific use case that you are trying to solve, the more and more you could get into a situation where it would make sense to actually write your own app. And for example, if you think of credentials that you need to provide for a connection to a third party uh, uh, system, this is then most likely the tipping point where you would switch from just ad hoc code or just writing a couple of lines of code in a notebook over to writing an app and actually wrap the, the data fetching from the external system and the authentication into an app and using that app uh, as a uh, through the API then as a layer going forward. Um, and again, just to stress this once more, you don't have to go down that path. You don't need to write the custom app. However, if in your journey of explorative analytics and playing around with queries and all of the data we have, writing your first couple of lines of code, um, 
you could eventually go down that path and we will show you today how you could actually pull that off. Dirk, just one a quick reminder, you were mentioning a lot of previous recordings we did. So folks, I have posted links already to some of these tutorials on notebooks, on dashboards, on workflows in the chat. If you're watching this, I also will post the links in the description of uh, the video. And uh, Dirk, uh, one of the things that I also want to highlight, there's a lot of great examples already out there that you will, I think, also show of uh, apps that have been built. I remember I just recorded a couple of videos on uh, the Salesforce app, the Carbon Impact app. There's one great demo app. It's called the uh, Monitoring Coverage app, which is also part of the demo uh, set of apps. So we actually have the full source code out there on the developer portal. So there's a lot of great use cases. And for me, it's just mind blowing what we now enable people to do by bringing your own logic to the data that is already in Dynatrace and then packaging it up nicely into an app that really looks and feels like it's just a native component of Dynatrace. I couldn't agree more. And th that actually is a nice segue to the, to the next slide because we we summarized the the top use cases that that we've uh, in the previously heard that customer would like to do with the Dynatrace platform, but until recently weren't able to do so. And one of those is, as already mentioned briefly, access to third party systems. So, as most of you probably know, we have uh, integrations with third party systems in the form of the problem notifications. It's a limited list with. Uh, besides the webhook integration, uh, not very flexible payload definition. So if you want to do something custom in here, your hands are pretty tight. Or if you want to talk to a, a third party system that is not yet supported. With App Engine, this shifts completely because now you can just write the integration to that third party system on your own if it's not there yet. And it, it allows you to either fetch data from an external system and, and work with that data in Dynatrace or just as with the typical problem notification use case, trigger some action in a third party system or send data to a third party system. And the important piece here is this does not only work with publicly available endpoints, but as announced, soon will also work with systems that are in private networks. So the component we are talking about here is called Edge Connect. We've announced it at Perform. Um, it, it is not GA yet, but it 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 will be soon. We're, we're really working hard on, on, on making that possible. And then you, for example, could solve, which is also one of our internal number one use cases, if a problem is identified in Dynatrace, I want to create a Jira ticket in my privately hosted Jira instance. Mm -hmm. And with Edge Connect, you just spin up the Edge Connect in your private network. There is a secure connection established that makes sure that no other thing uh, uh, gets to Edge Connect than the one request that would then create the issue in your Jira instance, which is pretty awesome, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just, just one one uh, of, of these use cases here. The second one is that you can also expose APIs by writing apps. So if you write an app that offers a backend function that runs on a Dynatrace platform, you can access it from an inter external system as well. So it's not only outgoing connections to a third party system, but also incoming connections. I think we will, we will touch that even in the, in the live demo later. Mm -hmm. A click please. The, the second uh, use case we often hear is that you can't do some custom visualizations or, or even build your own UI in, on, on, on the Dynatrace platform, which is now uh, of course possible. And this is actually something where I will not go into detail because this is deeply covered then in the hands-on session by Stefan. But let me say this, you can use custom visualization libraries now also in within the apps and 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 work with them and to visualize data in a certain way. And if we go to the third point, please, it's actually a combination of both. And we already briefly touched upon that also. So you can fetch external data to enrich the observability data that you already have in the data in the Dynatrace platform. And one good example of that would, for example, be a cloud cost analysis. So we have the information of all of the EC2 instances 
that you monitor with Dynatrace. You can fetch the pricing information or the price list from an external source, aggregate these two informations and have a, a good overview of what your uh, cloud cost uh, is currently and monitor that continuously. So that is like enriching external data with Dynatrace data. And another example is here, ChatDQL. Mm -hmm. That was also uh, uh, presented at Perform, which I think is a, a very cool use case. So if you're not very uh, technical and you want to write a DQL query, but you can write your question in natural language, it actually translates it to DQL. So there's that. Making use of an external service. Basically, what you're telling me is the sky's the limit. Everything is possible. Every idea that you have that might not be part of the core Dynatrace use case, what we would build as Dynatrace, you cannot build it. And whether you are a Dynatrace partner, see this as an opportunity. And also uh, as a Dynatrace user, right? because you may your organization may have very specific requirements. And just to make your life easier, you can build an app. Yeah. That is true. The sky is the limit. Let's see. Okay. I'm so excited to see what, what what ideas get implemented actually on App Engine in the weeks and months to come. Um, if you go to the next slide, so some some and some words, and, and then we will hand over to, to 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 Stefan. This is the the App Engine experience that we are actually going for. So for those of you who are actually familiar with Cloud Foundry, this could be uh, uh, also familiar to you. So this is the CF push haiku from Onsi Fakuri of Pivotal. And I really liked it because this, this is basically the mantra that we went for. Um, here's my source code, run it in the cloud for me. I do not care how. So click please. That means that what we actually did here is that the, the flagship apps that we uh, ship with App Engine, so dashboards, notebooks, workflows, and many other also run on App Engine. So we ourselves, our R&D people use App Engine to build apps and to solve the use cases on the Dynatrace platform. And our developers get the same tools as we actually will provide to you. So that is good, that is very good. And also that means that framework quality, performance, security, stability, reliability, all of the illities are on us because we need to actually maintain these illities also for our apps, and your apps, click please, just get uh, installed into the same place where our apps run, and that is actually in the Dynatrace platform. That is, as Andy mentioned before, there is no external hosting required. The logic runs where the data is. So there is low latency, you have access to all of the data, and we take care, care of all of the, well, expensive uh, um, elitist stuff for you, like auto scaling, policy enforcement. So of course, also the, the, the apps are deeply integrated into our policy system that we're rolling out now. Um, and with that, I think this was my last slide, Stefan, correct me if I'm wrong. It says demo. That means that my talk part is over. Are there any questions, Andy, that we should address right now? Yeah, I mean, first of all, thank you so much for the introduction. There were questions around, uh, this is uh, available for Dynatrace SaaS only. That's correct, right? This is Dynatrace yes. SaaS. Yes. The question was also no managed. So this is SaaS. FedRAMP, I think, is something we're looking into and working on. But uh, Dynatrace SaaS is what you're seeing right now. Or if you are on Dynatrace SaaS, then depending on which region you run, on which hyperscaler you run Dynatrace, you will have all of these capabilities available you know, in your, we started the rollout already. We're doing this by region. Um, if you want to get more information on when this is going to be available in your region, I would say reach out to your Dynatrace uh, account team. But as we speak, right, we're rolling this out globally. Yes. Yeah. And if more questions come in, just use Q&A. But now, Stefan, the floor yeah. is yours. Uh, hop on the stage and, uh, and excite us with some coding and with some UI and everything you have planned. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. I'm happy to have the chance to show you what we have achieved here. So basically, I want to continue the story from Dirk. Uh, as he mentioned before, uh, I assume I have here now a query from a colleague um, showing me all the services from my, my environment, basically. And therefore, 
Therefore, we want to visualize it today in a different way and create a custom app for this one. Where do I start? So basically, I start with developerdynatrace.com. This is our Dynatrace our developers resources for all development related uh, stuff. So to say, here you find introduction, getting started, sample apps, more later on. I want to quickly start immediately with the create your app. And all I do is I copy this command over here, open up my terminal. So let's go to workspaces. I insert this command and hit run. So basically what does this do? This is our Dynatrace app toolkit. Um, which uh, prepares a custom app for you with all necessary items and bundle uh, folders. So basically it starts with enter your name for your app. I we call it service services. So I'll say it's service link app. What I need to provide in here is the environment URL. So basically I go back, copy paste here this environment. And I do this to have the app immediately running into the context of this environment, because I want to fetch the data from there. And later on, you will see we develop in the context of this environment. So I hit run and say, yeah, we use NPM. So in the meanwhile, it's installing the dependencies from NPM necessary uh, for the package. I quickly jump over here to the dev portal. So basically, as said, here we'll find introduction about Dynatrace apps, getting started, quick start tutorials, with more thorough steps in here. Sample apps, really have a look into that one. Then basically all these development concepts on, on the platform from App Engine. Then UI and design. So basically we support you with lots of uh, UI components, even design guidelines, where you can create really shiny high level apps. There are, for example, in the reference, you will find Dynatrace App Toolkit. So basically the toolkit we use here uh, to, to create an app and develop the app, uh, deploy and so on. The Strato design system. So basically here we have lots and lots of UI components where you can build um, uh, apps out of the box. So with charts in there, uh, so really have already high level quality, quality apps. And to mention also SDK. So basically maybe we will recognize a few services in here, but basically this covers uh, a TypeScript SDK for Dynatrace services and also like utils, like for example, units where you need to convert between units and so on, which helps you during app development. But really here you'll find all the getting started material and everything you need then for app development. So looking here, okay. So the toolkit is done. Let's get started into the code. So service link, I go into the folder and I open my IDE. So what do you see now? Basically, this is what the toolkit prepares for us. So I have your source folders where I see, okay, we have here assets, the app main TSX, so we'll recognize that's React. And let's continue. I open new terminal in here and there. Wait a second. So, okay, I tell npx dt app dev. If on any chance you can make this a little bigger. A little bigger, the font size. Yeah, also the window, maybe the terminal window. I know it's uh, it's probably just standard output, but just a little bigger for people like me that where the eyesight is no longer as good as it used to be 10 years ago. It's always good to see a little better. Uh, the font size. Control plus is typically, but you on a Mac or whatever that is, I don't know. So basically, what does it do now? Uh, the toolkit now connects to the tenant so that the envi our environment authenticates me and immediately files up this example app. So this is basically this source code you've seen here in the IDE, served from locally from my machine in the context of this tenant. For example, we can already give it a try. Yeah, we have like explored data and this is live data from this environment in here. And there's where we start coding. So give you a better idea of that one. Let's jump in here. And basically, let's say in the pages, that's the home page where we can find welcome to our Dynatrace app. I just changed the heading. Give it a try. So I save it. It compiles in the background. So reloading browser. And here we go. And so that, this is how development works. So I do a change and see immediately 
the change implemented in this application. So I keep it next on the left on the left hand side here. I have that's it visible. Nice. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. So that means that you actually take away all of the hard work. I don't need to do anything. It's just I start coding and automatically it will compile the changes, pushes it up again, and then I can really interactively develop and, and play around with it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's an awesome experience. Okay, now I close this one. I will do a quick cleanup in here. So I just remove the files to get started with our app. So we don't need a few of this stuff. Uh, same goes here. So basically that's what we needed for our, our template. And in our app, I remove some routes, header, so that we have a clean start over here. And basically we started uh, with um, to fetch the same data here from the, the services from the notebooks. So what I want to do for this step one, I say MPX DT app, generate function, get entities. This now, so, G, GF is, is short for generate function, correct? Yeah, generate, yeah. Function. thank you. So what we create here now, uh, in the API folder, I get now a file called get entities. This is now an app function. So uh, there we go. We can call this app function. Here you see when it's, it's generated a few examples how you can call this one. So basically you can recall, uh, you can call it here from the code, that's the example. And basically in this function, now um, we want to do the fetch call. So import, I want to create data then. Um, import query execution client from the Dynatrix SDK. Here we get it with the client query. And there I want to say, okay, um, const result, oh wait, query execution client, query execute. And there I have like the, the, the the body, operation is the body. So I can do, oops, let's do it next line that we can see it here. The body with, um, oops, oops, oops. A query. And this is our query I want to add from here, basically fetch all the data. So with the fetch mm -hmm. seconds, this is when you have really long running uh, queries to make sure they arrive and they can have long running query. Uh, so, so this is now part of, part of the journey that I described earlier, right? So you start out in the notebook with a query, with a DQL query, and then you want to want to get really fancy with the data you get back from that, and you can just copy over the the query you wrote into your app and just continue to 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 work there. So I, yeah, it's, it's it's great. So for us, I see. Okay, I want to have this this services. Let's call it the services services, and I want to pick it from the result result result, and there we have the records. So that's for visibility reasons. Uh, and for all the services, for each, I want to iterate over it uh, and create nodes. Sorry, I have to quickly jump to one of these there. Okay. The services um, where we want to iterate. Um, not, let's do a map on this one. So we want to have a, a, a final result, let's call it this one, and a map on the service. And we need an index, let's keep it a bit short in there. So, and for every uh, service entry, I now create um, an object with an ID from the service ID and a data object where I can add, for example, a label. I want to have visible then on one of my nodes in the visualization. I get this from accessing this in the data by uh, 
TPT name, for example. So finishing that up here. Um, position, yeah, we can avoid this one, not necessary in this case, and having the closing gaps in here. So now I have all the, uh, the, the service results from EQL mapped to my objects like ID and data. We will use them in the visualization. And then I return at nodes, final result. This is basically, so my, my map of nodes, which I want to use later on in the visualization. And first of all, to show it in like a list in a dropdown, for example. Let's start with dev server again. I want to fetch this endpoint and see this returns the correct values. And folks, some questions are coming in while as, as, as this is compiling. Uh, this is SAS, what we are showing you here. These are the SAS, new SAS capabilities. And the other questions that came in, Dirk, and I think you have answered this around what languages do we support? It's TypeScript. It's TypeScript React, and no, no, no plans to, to, to do that for other languages now. And it's the same TypeScript uh, with the same capabilities that you are also able to use in your notebooks and in your dashboards, right? As you said, for those people that started joining late, the idea of all of this is you have data in Dynatrace that you ingest, and then you can you know, analyze the data using notebooks, but maybe you want to bring in external data. Maybe you want to process the data in a special way and then visualize it in a special way. This is where eventually you want to move from a notebook that you built and putting your code and your custom logic into an app that like Stefan is showing uh, right now, you can then build, you can then develop locally on your local tenant and then you can push up so that all of your colleagues can use this as well. So uh, really a great way to say we have data, but we want to do more with it and we want to make it look and feel like this is a core Dynatrace capability. Because we at Dynatrace, we also build everything we do now using the app engine. Right? So you're just like another Dynatrace engineer that is building and extending Dynatrace with new capabilities. Mm -hmm. What you see now, basically, uh, I tried to fetch the data from an endpoint, but data is secured. So basically, um, you have to, not every app is allowed to fetch everything. So basically, you have clearly to declare what the app is allowed to fetch, basically. Uh, and now let's have a look here again. Uh, get entities, records. This, this ties back to what I said before, that there's a deep integration of all of App Engine's functionality into the policy system. So good, good that you showed that, Stefan. Yeah, thanks. Just have a look at this one. So still one point, one hiccup here. So basically, as you can see, if our errors are happening, you would have the immediate feedback here in the uh, the console output. And here we go. So basically, this is now the return value of the node as a JSON, basically, what I fetch from the function. And this is now what I want to reuse in the UI. Basically. So down on that side, jumping back to the UI. So basically here, I have a page header, the empty app. When I have a look in here, it's plain empty. Uh, to get along with this, um, I want to import quickly a few React state handling into the app. You will, you will need later on, but I want to focus then on the, the, the key highlights. So just to have the imports done here, we will need later on um, React flow. So save that one for now. And I add, if we need additional packages, what we want to use today is for example, React flow. I can show you later on. That's where how we want to show visualization. For example, that's an external library. I'll give you a quick hint on that one. And we want to have the at Dynatrace at Dynatrace SDK uh, app utils. That's what we, what we need to call the function then. So I do a quickly npm install. We will fetch the packages from npm. 
And while you do this, I know there's a lot of folks here that think that see Dynatrace maybe the first time. So if you're new to Dynatrace, right, this is a very advanced session today about the new app engine where you can build apps. If you're new to Dynatrace, if you want to know what Dynatrace can do, how we ingest data, whether we can monitor your on-premise or your cloud systems or your Kubernetes system, there's a lot of information out there. Uh, I will repost the link now in the chat so you can make yourself familiar with what else Dynatrace uh, can do. Um, but uh, let's, uh, Stefan, sorry for interrupting you, but I just want to make sure that people that are kind of new also know that uh, there's more stuff that Dynatrace does on the basic level. Okay. So basically I have done all the imports and now the next thing what I want to do is uh, I want to fetch now these, or I want to call this um, uh, get entities function when the page loads. So basically in React, they use this use effect and we will create um, a function called load nodes and this should load on, on every page load and for this we create this function uh, const load nodes that was already supposed and then let's say let's fetch all the the, the, the services this functions call um, I want to call the get entities this one when I get sorry uh, I have to move it a bit to see it not the radar but what is completely streaking me here so next line uh, with uh, then when we get the response we have the response text in here to see that one let's see that way response text so that's what you've seen from the function before and as a next uh, then the text i want to pass as a json but this we want to already pass the result so uh, i say my result is the JSON parsed text. And from the result, as you set services, this is now setting the state, as I have mentioned before. So we use this use state array nodes from React. Basically, now I want to set the state with my result of this node. And set loaded to say true that the initial run is done for uh, React. And it knows that we, can, we have the, the first run of loading data done in here. So that's one and then let's continue that. So basically this should now load all the um, nodes on page load. Let's have a look in here. Maybe we see this is how we can debug in here. Let's have a look at the network going on, reloading. And there we see now lots of stuff going on. Here we get to get entities. There you see the response. Now I'm calling from the UI with this function and have now these nodes available in my React state, where we can continue now from. So now I have a, a list of all the services. Uh, these now I want to use to really uh, um, use in a drop down, for example, on my header up here that we get the first visual in here. So for this, I use um, the header, let's start there, form field. That's from the Strato design system. Uh, label select service perfectly. There we use a select, and to select, I say selected ID. There I need the selected service. Okay, this works, but not on select, but on change. On change property, I switch to selected, set selected service, call this state. So for, for the select, let's have a closing select in here and a closing form field. So closing form field. Okay. Format it to receive. So let's have a quick import and on the select. Selected ID, that selected, not change. Selected 
on the select. We will have in here. Have null is not assigned to subject in selected service. Selected ID. I quickly have to check. Ah, I think we are still missing the gaps in here. Yeah. Okay. It needs to run. So basically, there yeah, we need some select options in the, the selection. And the select options are the single items in a drop down, basically. And for example, these are defined by an ID. I say element ID and then a uh, key this element ID. Okay, this works. Label is not necessary in this case. And there we have an option. And the label we provide like element, element te text. And there we have closing tag select option. So um, this is how we define, so to say, the entry. For this, we need now these options. So we have now loaded the services over there, have all the load nodes, then the, load, the nodes loaded, and now I want to define uh, every entry these options. I start over here with, let's say, the const options. Need there. This is now, so we use memo, that we keep it in the React state again. Um, have it here, and then I say return uh, services map all this map uh, service. Make it a bit clearer. So I guess map, and this returns every time an an object. Um, do it that way with uh, ID. And there we say it's the yeah service ID and the label or text is the service data and uh, label. So that's what we defined in here. That's where I'm accessing to from the, from the from the function. So have a post down there, and this needs then to be triggered every time the server services state changes, then we get the options. Back to our, uh, our dropdown. So basically now we want to fill the dropdown with all the service options that we have. Uh, we'll start with the React tag here and options map and every element. So to say, iterate over it to have exactly this part the options. So I hit save and let's check it out. So now it reloads again. Here we go. So basically, now I added here this drop down in the header up there where ta -da, I mm. get the all services. Mm. So, Next. Stefan, ju just a quick recap because I know maybe not everybody on the call is a developer and, and, and grasps everything that just happened here because some of people are also new. What you basically just did, you created a new app from scratch with a template and in the app that runs natively in Dynatrace, you are able to query any type of data. Like in your case, you're querying all of the entities Dynatrace is currently monitoring for you. And then you are creating, like in this case, a drop down box and you are, we are using React as a front end with a special design system to make it easier for you to actually create uh, UI components that look and feel exactly like everything else. And then with this, obviously, you can then do so much more. Folks, I, I know this is this is ex extremely exciting, especially if you're an engineer. But even if you are not an engineer, think about the options that you have, building your own apps and you have full access to the data. I see a lot of questions that come in. Can you only query data that sits in Dynatrace? No, you can query external data. You can bring everything in, and this is the exciting thing about all of this. And everything runs natively in Dynatrace as a Dynatrace app, just as everything else in Dynatrace does. Everything is an app these days. It shows us somewhat the flexibility. But yep. well, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So this is now as far as the journey went for now. Uh, the next step would be as soon as I want uh, select a service, I want to get now all the services which are called or called my service 
and have it visualized now with a third party plugin, for example. For this, we want to use, I just quickly show, for example, one out there, React Flow, where you can find tons of examples. And basically, often this, you start prototyping, you have your data, then you grab one of these examples, throw it in, and give it a try to, to show how it works. So today, we want to use the same here to show now the, the uh, connections between the services. Uh, for this one, um, I just, let's say, okay, we have here the main page. Um, I want to add a flex box, basically to have a container, flexible one from our design system with, let's say the width of 100% and height, maybe just 700 pixels, to have it reduced in size here. And now close that one flex box. And in this container, I want to add now like one of these examples from, from React Flow. Basically, I just grab one of the examples, throw it in here. It's still an empty one for now, but let's see if it builds. Let's have a quick check. So running the checks. And we'll have a reload in a second. OK, yeah, here we can see there's already this grid maybe in the background. Mm -hmm. So I has already added this component there, an external one. And now we want to add the data. So basically to add the nodes and the edges in here. For this, uh, I prepared or start again with MPX DT app generate function get entity, entity relation. I generate a new app function where I want to fetch additional relations and build again visualization objects in there. So let's have a second. And here, this. Okay, here we go. It's already there. Get entity relations. So basically, I get again this empty boilerplate, but I prepared here, let's say, um, again, a query, which fetches now all the relations um, for this one service. So I can filter by the service ID, uh, build again, for example, the calls, the entity relations in between, and return in the end of all the nodes and the edges which are related to my service. So let's save this one. And again, give it a try here, the XDT app dev. So always having the dev server running in the background that they see the constant updates there. On the UI side then, I want to fetch now um, all these relations, basically as soon um, as, as uh, I select one of the drop in the drop down of one service. I do do this. So basically I use again, I use memo from React. Basically I start with set nodes to set them, the initial nodes to have a, every time a clean screen. It's a bit of a cleanup, set edges, same for the set edges here. And then I want to start again with functions. That's from our SDK, call, uh, get entity relations. And there I pass in the selected, selected service as a parameter, which I interpret then in, in the function. From there, put it in the next line to have it better readable here. When I get then uh, the, the response from here, I can want to have the text. Yeah, then pass the text. So basically, Auto completion already learned that how to parse it to nodes and my edges. And then I want to set the nodes, set the edges. Again, this is the React state up there. So I have now the data from the function in my UI. Uh, and this should be done every time the selected service has changed or set edges and edge has changed, or maybe a set node has changed. So I save this one now. And let's have a look. Running checks in the background. Okay, let's go to the Easy Trade Broker service. Here we go. So basically, now I have lots of 
Uh, these are derivations I fetched via this function. I provided this layout. And now I'm immediately using a, a using a third party visualization to where you can continue now, really move more rich interactions on it, do drill downs, do whatever you want, so to say. And this is where really the power lies then. Wow. But that's not all, so to say. Now we built the app that far. Any questions so far? Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm speechless. That's my problem. <laughs> but in all seriousness, this is, um, as I said earlier, this is uh, you know if you are obviously familiar with 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 React uh, and with with TypeScript, this is then then even so much even more easier. But you already showed even with not knowing a whole lot of 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 coding that you can do this. We have a lot of examples out there, There's a lot of tutorials, which really enables and empowers everyone to build custom apps. I think it's so advisable that you have obviously, you know, basic coding skills for building, especially like apps with custom visualizations and everything. But it's it's amazing that you can pull in any external libraries. This was also something that uh, was asked on the Q&A earlier, right? Can you pull in any external libraries? And yes, you can, right? Because you don't need to reinvent the wheel and you're not limited to what we provide as part of the Dynatrace uh, Strato system. Yeah, definitely. One last step, maybe then. So basically, now this app, this was still local development. You mm -hmm. see live data in the context of our panel. Yeah. Let's have the exciting part. Let's deploy this app. So basically, now it bundles up, the tooltip bundles up, does a, a few checks. If the app is fine, I authenticate again uh, to our environment. Here you can see it builds the app. And let's. It takes some while as we upload the app and do the, all the installation stuff there. Finished, preparing for development. And now we should have like the service link app popping up. Here we go. Hmm. So this is the app. Hmm. Go in there, waiting for the backend to be ready. For sure, we deployed it a second before, so to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's immediately in this on the platform. Mm -hmm. So that means now you developed it locally. That means uh, the, the code executed actually in, in, in your environment. Uh, now you package the app, you deployed it. It's available on your Dynatrace tenant. That means everyone that has access to this tenant, all of your colleagues can use the same app. Yeah. That's the charm, especially because locally you have multiple people in a team working on the same app. Mm -hmm. Basically working locally ensures that you have quick iterations on it. Mm -hmm. When you sure, then you can deploy. Yeah. Hey, one question that just comes in, and maybe Stefan, you can answer this. Uh, what What are the ways to parameterize or to configure the app? I mean, is there any kind of property files? Can there any be thing the way you can configure settings through the UI? How would an app configure things? Uh, configure things in which context? Yeah, you may want to have I don't know configure options, right? You maybe different you know, maybe, name, for yeah, example. Yeah, maybe you want to say you, you provide a different, like I think mm -hmm. settings, we'll be talking about our settings, set, either the name, but also I think settings for the app. Where would an app store settings? Settings. Mm -hmm. uh, settings is, so to say, in the works, basically. You have chances to, for example, um, put stuff into documents by the document service or in app states um, for an intermediate step, but especially mo especially modifying settings, they are upcoming efforts, yeah. Yeah, and and maybe to add to that, so there will be the possibilities that apps can have app settings themselves, mm -hmm. which so you can specify, for example, username and password or so credentials of your external state third party systems, which are then, of course, also stored in a secure manner that no passwords are leaked or anything. And we built it in a way again that only the backend function of that app that has that schema deployed has access to the plain text value because it, it needs it at one point when it makes the request to the third party system. But other than that, no one ever gets access to the to the value of that password. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think what I also remember from some of the apps I've played with, like the DQL Dojo, you can store uh, things state in the user settings or in the user state. Right. You can you have options to store and persist state as well, and I'm sure this is all as yeah perfect like you are in the uh, in the documentation here. Yep. Example: Document service state 
exactly mm -hmm. here we have some um, um sdks and services provided basically mm -hmm. where you can handle all, all these mm -hmm. so basically the i mean the developer portal is already containing a lot of amazing information and and as we go along i'm sure there will be more samples obviously the sdks itself that we provide will be extended and everything a great way to start is the developer portal at developer.dynatrace.com or for short i think dynatrace.dev that's the short link to it yeah yeah but yeah here you start and mm -hmm. find everything mm -hmm. Okay, the app is deployed. So from my side, mm -hmm. there's a there's a couple of I mean, there's this like the Edmond is just asking, can you then drill down into that data you pulled in Dynatrace? Say you want to see the dependency of a service in the current app example. I guess what what's also available in apps, you have intents, right? You can then open up other apps and give it a certain content, a context, yeah. um, and what you have, whatever you want to do natively in your app you can obviously do right you can click on something and then you can open up data and query data in your app or the uh, idea of intents where an app can provide um, an action for a certain thing so for instance you will see a lot in the new dynatrace platform ui that you can say open with and you for instance for, for instance from a notebook you can say open with and all the apps that can deal with this will be provided in that list. So for instance, you can, from a notebook, open up the same data in a dashboard or in a workflow. And I guess the same will then be true from, you can say, I wanna open uh, a service screen or an entity, and then the entity screen comes up for that particular entity. Right? You can also re, I mean, that's the nice thing. You just have intents to then open other apps. And it's like, if you think about your phone, right on my phone, uh, it's very tightly interconnected with contact. So if I say send something, then the list of apps come up that where I can send a certain thing to. And that's the same thing here. It's all intent-based. Yeah, so basically you can easily implement the, the if it's a very specific functionality directly, as I said, if you make it interactively mm -hmm. in your visualizations or you pass it over to a compatible app, which can mm -hmm. handle this intent on the platform. Yeah. So Stefan, do me a favor. Uh, I know we are running uh, low on time and I wanna just highlight some of the additional content and also sessions that are coming up because this is just really, a, it's already going really nice into, into some details, but it's still just scratching the surface as we speak. And if you do me a favor and click to the next slide, if you want to learn more, there's going to be a lot of things coming, but just the immediate ones on May 31st, we have an Ask Me Anything session, both on US East and US Pacific uh, time with some of our product experts. Then on June 16th, folks, I think Dirk and Stefan, you are part of that as well. On June 16th, right? You are doing a session and you can uh, uh, register on uh, the community for that particular one, June 16th, 3 p.m. EMEA, 9 a.m. US East, I will also make sure for the listeners here to paste the links to that. And uh, because I think that's going to be great because they will have you there and you can ask direct questions to you. So that's this link. And for the, um, the Ask Me Anything on May 31st, please have a look at our LinkedIn profile. The um, event should be up uh, in the next couple of hours. And then maybe one more click, Stefan, if you do me the favor. For those of you that are new to Dynatrace and have not seen all the new capabilities or are completely new to Dynatrace, One Agent Tutorials, that's kind of the link to the YouTube channel that really contains uh, a lot of videos that you can watch around all sorts of Dynatrace capabilities from basic monitoring, from infrastructure, mod application, real user monitoring, data ingest, Kubernetes, everything is there. Then we have particular sessions on apps. I can also suggest the App Spotlight playlist. There we have some existing apps that we put out on the hub, but there's also one really nice one is the monitoring coverage sample app, which you also find in the developer portal as a sample app that you can clone on GitHub and then just play around with yourself and modify. And then obviously the hint again to the developer portal, dynatrace.dev. Uh, this video will be available, I would say most likely either later today or, uh, or tomorrow. So the post-processing takes just a couple of hours and then we will upload it on YouTube and also Dynatrace University. Dirk, Stefan, any 
any other final words? What any words of of whatever? I mean, you've built apps now for a while. Obviously, you are the uh, the brains behind the App Engine. Anything else you can give our our listeners on the way? Uh, my my tip is just just try out the the the, the quick start and actually get your get your feet wet with just playing around a bit and see how easy it actually is to build your first app mm -hmm. and then if you find the need you we, we hopefully provide you with enough resources that you can find your way as you want to move along Stefan anything from you um, we have we had internal innovation days using the app engine and we are so curious and excited to see what's happening on innovation with that so looking forward. Yeah. Talking about innovation, I think, Dirk, we talked about this in the beginning before we kicked off the thing. Uh, you also built an app uh, years ago already when the whole thing kicked off, but now you are, you have it kind of using the yeah. new app engine. Yeah, it, it was one of the first demos we did with a very alpha prototype, but the use case was valid where I did some um, statistic analysis of some uh, uh, numbers we track. And now it was actually over the last weeks, able to rebuild it with, with all of the new features that we provide. And yeah, it's just a blast to actually also make use of, of what you build in your in your daily work uh, yourself. So it, it's really great. Mm -hmm. And to Stefan's point, so the, the, most, the most awesome app that I have seen is so a couple of developers at Dynatris built a multiplayer game we using app right. state as the as the synchronization point so it was there's a lot of possibilities there and i'm really curious to see where where all this goes mm -hmm. <laughs> and what i can i want to give credits also to Sini, one of our colleagues he built the dql dojo app which is a great learning app for dql which i've used last week at my workshop so thank you so much Sini, for this i also know that we had as you look here the carbon impact app the salesforce insights app where we're pulling data from uh, the Salesforce API into Dynatrace and then bundle it up with all the other data and then provide special visualization and analytics. Then we also have uh, apps around business flow. We have um, more, I mean, everything in Dynatrace is now an app and there's so many more apps that are coming up. One last idea that I also know one of our customers that is using business events to track the business process, right? Let's say order. Right? You have an order management system where people can order something and you pro you track everything with Dynatrace from order comes in until the payment, until the delivery. Uh, they are building now, one of the customers that I know is they're building an app now where they support people in case a delivery does not work. They are using an app in Dynatrace where they can look up the order in Dynatrace by order number or by customer ID, which means these are people that are not familiar with Dynatrace. They don't need to know DQL. They don't need to know dashboards and notebooks. But what they have is a purpose-built app in Dynatrace that allows them to exactly look up that order information and then see where the order is stuck or where something went wrong. These are all cool new ideas of bringing logic to your data that is already in Dynatrace and enabling more people to work with the data in a more efficient way. Awesome. So recording will be up soon. Dirk, Stefan, I know it is time for a beer because I think our colleagues have already started over there, the release party in our Linz Tower and wherever else they, they are they're partying today. Today is a big day for us. Uh, we just announced amazing results uh, financially in case you have not seen this. So I think we're doing a, as Dana Trainatrice, we're doing a, a good job uh, and really, you know, uh, advancing in our industry and helping our customers. But now it's time to party on our end. Thank you. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. See ya. Bye.